Welcome back to another episode of the Entertainment Roundup. I'm Jay77. I got four stories I want to talk about. Might as well start with the first one that actually hit the entertainment waves like a angry bees attacking a man for hitting the beehive. And for reasons I do not know, I don't know why this is made a big deal. I have listened to all sides on this matter, and I still don't get what the problem is. But um, this has to do with the Vogue magazine cover. And one of the people who actually posted the um, cover, made that decision, is uh, is defending herself, uh, which I don't see why she should even bother. Um, but here it is. Um, Kim, Kim going to ask in the County West post, uh, post uh, a framed photograph of Anna Liska April's cover of Vogue. And while a soon-to-be married couple appear deeply in love, the internet is not deeply in love with their appearance in the iconic magazine. The backlash first caught fire on Friday when CBS The Crazy One star Michelle, uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar tweeted, I guess I'm canceling my Vogue description. Who's with me? Apparently, many readers was just displeased with, uh, with Gellar with the choice as evidence across the social media. The Vogue official Facebook page rocked up to 747 comments at the same time of this post, the majority of which are critical of the editor's decision to feature Kandashian and Wes on the cover. <coughs> um, the rap pulled, um, pulled a simple, just some of the comments, uh, pulled samples of some of the comments on the Vogue Facebook, we know Vogue was dying, we know Vogue was dying, but this is it, the official death of Vogue, writes a reader, uh, one of the readers. Um, Lupica won the Oscars and Kardashian is, is on the, I can't even bring myself to say it. <laughs> um, the angry opinions just goes on and on from there. Of course the spoof came as well as the Muppets one and the Kermit embrace Miss Piggy. <laughs> I seen that one on Seth Rogen and James Franco, a duo that apparently remade the West uh, music video Bonds to go into action. The Vogue editor in chief um, penned the edi editor's letter defending the decision as permanently explained that West did not coerce the magazine into a cover shoot. And this is where <clears throat> most of the beef is coming out there. That many people believe that Wes had pulled some muscles to get uh, his, uh, fian his fiance on the cover of Vogue. It was him. And it's not a bad picture. I actually like the picture. I really do. I, I think it's a, it's a nice picture. Um, and they seem happy, and that's fine. It's not my place here. Um, but many people felt, especially after the tweet, he said, This is a dream come true. I'm very happy, and thank you. And people seem to be. For the better or worse, not very happy. There's my theory on that. I I, I don't think he did <clears throat> pull any muscles. I don't think that's something that uh, that he did. Even if he had pulled some strings, it's a front cover of a magazine. So what? Why is this such big news? Why are people always hanging on to this as if she basically destroyed their childhood dream? It's, it, it, to me, it's there's a lot more serious matters than seeing Kardashian and Keanu West on the front cover. I think the cover is fine. I don't have no problem with this. I don't know. Um, I don't even realize people made a big deal of covers to begin with. But then again, we had a situation with the Bronx to Marathon, and that didn't vote too well either. But the point I'm trying to get here is that it's not that serious. It's not serious at all. Um, and even if he did flex his muscles... Um, wouldn't be shocked. It wouldn't shock me because many people have that kind of pull. Um, but to me, it's not either way. It's not something that uh, deserves this much anger, this much backlash. And it makes me wonder if it's just the fact is Kardashian's face is in there, and the fact that uh, they remember what happened a few years ago uh, with the supposedly wedding, which ended into probably one of the quickest divorces um, in recent time and that people have not forgive or forgot uh, what she have done. There are still fans are still bitter on that situation. I of course have just moved on and believe me the Kardashian clan has a lot more issues to deal with especially with Kardashian's sister dealing with 
or her um, the recent separation with her husband. So to me, there's a lot more important issues I think the Kardashian um, has to worry about. Um, I just also think the fact is that many people are not really feeling the fact that Kim Kardashian and Kanye West are together. They've been together for a few years now. <clears throat> let it go. I mean, just, just let it go. I mean, that, that, that's the case. But in terms of her being in a picture, I really don't think this it is worth... Um, it is worth all this anger, this backlight. It's a front cover. The important thing is, can what's in the in the magazine itself um, that readers should be concerned about, not what's on the cover of the magazine. Because, like I said, Kardashian and Keanu West is not going to ruin your day. It's really not. And if you really hang it on to a front cover, then that says a lot. As for Sarah Michelle Gellar, <clears throat> I don't know if she. I, to what I understand, I don't remember any beef with her being with, with the Kardashian, if there is, I, I haven't seen it, and if you would know about it, please let me know in the comment section, because I don't get why she's mad about this, uh, I don't get why she uh, felt the need to stir up this even more than what it was already half, and uh, to me it makes me wonder, if there's something else going on between, not just much as the as Vogue and the Kardashian and Wes, but with Selma Michelle Gellar and Kardashian that she... Uh, it's really disgusted just by seeing our presence. Like to hear your opinion on the matter, like to hear what you gotta say. Let's move on to the second story. Uh, boy, 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 boy. I don't know why he keeps showing up on my thing. But apparently he makes himself known. <clears throat> um, Ted Nugent. Um, apparently something happened that forced me to talk about him. And it's something that you gotta look at it both ways. In many ways, he's laughing his way in the bank, but at the same time, you gotta wonder just how much people seem to be turned off by you that they are willing to pay you sixteen thousand dollars to not appear at an event. This actually happened. A town paid Ted Nugent sixteen thousand dollars to not show up in one of the events. Normally, it's the opposite. To my opinion, you top dollars to show up. They're paying them not to show up. So according to the article, which is done by the Huffington Post, <clears throat> Rocket Ted Nugent just made a big buck to not show up up show somewhere. The town of Longview, Texas, paid Nugent $16,000 to not appear in the town 4th of July festival. According to KLTV, the city spokesman said that Nugent was not the right feel of this kind of, of community event. The city had reached a verbal agreement with Nugent scheduled scheduled the rocker uh, as the headliner who would pay inside the uh, Mitchell's Club Convention and Activity Center during the town's Independence Day celebration. To break the, that agreement, the town paid Nugent half of his guaranteed performance fee of $32,000 from uh, the move called annual budget. The move comes in criticism of comments um, Nugent had made about President Barack Obama on January um, 2014, calling him a subhuman mongrel, which I have actually covered. Nugent, who campaigned with Texas Attorney General, uh, <clears throat> A candidate, um, Greg Albert, aimed uh, aimed the controversy, apologized for those comments on February. Albert said he was moving on from the controversy over Nugent in the late February, but his ties to the rocker remains a prominent talking point for both sides of the government race. Albert, Albert rivalry Texas State Senator Wendy Davis, Democrat, called the Attorney General um, in, a general's embrace of Nugent, an insult while former Vice President Kennedy Senator Palin cited the rocker in her, in her endorsement of Albert. If he is good enough for Ted Nugent, he is good enough for me. Of course, this is Palin saying that on, on Facebook. Now, again, he's he has not lost anything too much. Yeah, he would have had a big payday, but he still is walking away with $16,000. And in many ways, business side, he's smiling. He's having fun. You know, he's, he's he got sixteen thousand dollars of money he didn't have to earn um, by not showing up. However, I'm just being straightforward. 
somebody does a town pay me money to not show up that's not a good sign either that's telling me a lot about how turned off a lot of people are and how much they do not want to associate yourself themselves with your presence and I don't think he's going to change matters in terms of his politics he, he hates Obama fine um, I still disagree with how aggressive and how racially charged it has been obvious towards him um, especially using a, a word that is definitely definitely uh, out of line but <clears throat> at the same time he got to realize that uh, him continuing doing what he's doing is only going to make his career worse he's still got a fan base but after a while, even the fan base is going to say, you know, I can't, I can't deal with it. It's too much for me. Um, it's, it's too much. And this is not just these comments. He's been doing this a lot over, doing his tours overseas, really just bashing Obama every chance he gets. And there's one thing, again, to knock the president. There are a lot of people who don't like the president for many reasons. Uh, people who I follow on YouTube don't like the president for many reasons. That's fine. But to go all the way and call him something that... We, you and I know that it's basically a racially slurred uh, comment. You really push your luck. It goes beyond uh, what Obama's policy is, or beyond what um, any politician policy is. And I agree with some of the com with some of the cri um, some of the criticism towards the, um, the liberals, how they call certain people Hitlers, and how they call other people um, terrorists themselves. You got to be mindful that um, some of that it does sound like it's beyond the policies of some of your fellow Republicans or some some of the GOPs because not all of them like that and you basically throwing it out there expecting people not to do the same thing you gotta be mindful of what you say to people uh, at all times regardless of if you don't like their policies and Ted Newton again he made his $16,000 he made his money but I'm looking at that as well as wow um, this is Texas my heartland and uh, they don't even want me here at least part of it, and I think that it, it, they need to. He needs to rethink what he's doing, especially when he's turning off people to not show up at an event that he's used to performing at. Just a little mind thought. Even if you're a fan of uh, of his, I know there's a lot of them out there. You can't be too happy about um, Newton being turned away, and uh, Newton can't be too happy about a city turning him away. Yeah, he got a sixteen thousand. He's smiling at the bank, but in the end, he's also thinking, "Wow, just how much, how, how many people, how many cities is going to turn me away for what I have said about the president?" Just something to keep in mind. Um, leave a link below. Love to hear your feedback. Moving right on. Um, this here is an interesting um, talk. Here, this is the talking point. Tony Bennett, uh, when he speaks. I think a lot of people listen. He is one of the living legends of music. He is 87 years old, still selling out concerts. Um, he recently, about a few months ago, can't say recently, um, had a um, benefit had a had a uh, Radio City t um, concert. Um, he is one of the guys who is pretty much his music speaks for itself. So when he says uh, modern music is terrible people will listen. Um, there is one thing I will bring up here that really scratched my head, but I'm going to read what it says. Tony Bennett may have, plan, may have plans to record an album with Lady Gaga, but on the whole, the veteran musician is not a fan of today's pop hits. The song that was written today, most of them are terrible, Bennett said in a new interview of BBC Radio. It's very bad period, music, musically throughout the world for popular music. The 87-year-old singer, who has been in the music business for more than 50 years, put the blame put the blame for said terrible music on the record companies rather than the recording artists. He said this for a reason. The corporation took it over and they want to make it so much much money they don't care whether the public likes it or not. He said they think the public is arrogant so their attitude is don't give them anything intelligent because they won't because it won't sell. Let me uh, reread that. 
because that's a very powerful statement from a living legend. The corporations took it over, and they won't. They want to make it. They want to make so much money, and they don't care whether the public likes it or not. He said they think the public is arrogant, so their attitude is don't give them anything intelligent because it won't sell. Now, I want you guys to actually, before commenting on this, I want you guys to read the whole article. I'm also going to ask you in the last, I'll say, 13 years, I want you to listen to the, the music you listen to on the radio now. First of the music that came out in the 80s, 70s, and 60s. I will say, for those who lived in the 90s, go past your Go, don't go past the 80s. Those who are like me was born 1977, dated from 1977 on to now. And ask yourself this one question. Is the music smarter, more original than it was? Or is the music pretty much recopying the same stick over and over again? Do you know why a lot of people don't like boy bands? Do you know why I don't listen to One Direction even though I got no beef against them? I'm hearing the same sound over and over and over again. They are, they know they're targeting audience. And they know that there are fans who will stick up to this music, whether their music is great or not. With that being said, the music industry right now is arrogant in many ways in terms of what people think is good and what people think is not good. And what's sad about it is that there are actually great artists out there wonderful artist, artist that has a statement, that has a message behind their music. And these are not just, you know, hip-hop, rap, country, R&B, all these musicians are out there that are so clever, so smart, so original, and they won't get picked up by the radio business because they don't fit their criteria. They don't fit what's, the, what's going on in the norm. Macklemore and I made a made a video about this about whether or not he deserves to win for um, Artist of the Year and I've noticed a lot of people did not like that Macklemore tried to make peace he tried to you know say hey, look I don't deserve it I personally didn't think he needed to apologize for something that the Grammys did <coughs> but I also asked this question what did Macklemore did differently that all the other rappers who was nominated at that time didn't and the thing is I looked at Thrift Shop and I said this is what he did different he made a different tone that people actually liked. Okay? Do I think he deserved out of the year? Really, honestly, I can't really say. Alright, I have to, me, I have to listen to all the music and ask myself, does any of these music um, were better than him? A lot of people felt that he actually deserved it. A lot of people felt he didn't. But the point is, there is a pattern that people have that people are not feeling right now. I am not a fan of rap music of this era. This rap music to me is horrible. All right? I'm listening to the same old, same old, and none of them have anything new to tell me. Okay? Not to mention even the beats are starting to be bad. Now, I listen to underground rap. I listen to even YouTube rap and rap out of history, and I'm enjoying it because it's original, it's something different, it's something fun and entertaining, and even educational. Lindsey Sterling, her, she had a great year this year. She's not a rapper. She's a hip-hop violinist. But I love hearing her work. I love hearing her music. And she actually had a better year than most professional artists out there today. So there is something to be said that what Tony Bennett said. The music is terrible, but that's because there's also a criteria that the corporations won't escape from. That's the problem. It says in an article here, Ben is set to release his new album project with Lady Gaga later this year. The collaboration of the mother monster who he called the music Versailles will be a jazz duet album. And that's pretty much it. Again, no problem whatsoever. Okay, I have no problem whatsoever. I actually agree with Tony Ben what he says. I think he has hit the nail on the button. I do have a question though. Lady Gaga is uh, not a bad musician. I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say she's terrible. She's very, very talented. I just don't see him actually. There's something about the connection between the two. I just, I kind of watch. You do know Lady Gaga is pretty much in that um, popular mode. You know, she's not exactly terrible, but she's definitely one of those people who is doing a trend. 
that's what I think I said that's what the only problem is but other than that I think that he's right I think that there's I even go further saying that as long as that arrogance still exists we'll get the same crap just like we have getting the same crap of movies and other things that we hold dear because there is a not, there is a stigma in the music industry that doesn't want smart creative elevated music to be played but rather this slop uh, and if you're talking about it between the ages of 16 and 25 you're going to get that unfortunately it's very unfortunate this is why the music business is not what it used to be and they have been suffering from it ever since but they still won't escape that situation and Tony Bennett who's 85 years old I'm telling you right now even the young guys when he says something like that listen because no one would know more than a man like him. He's been in the business for a long time. And his name still sells. His name still sells. You guys have an opinion? like to hear your thoughts on that? Uh, I'm going to go right towards a uh, little bit something for those who are cable describers. I kind of laugh at this uh, article here. It says cable describers have fallen again. What can the industry do to bring back, going back customers? Well, for starters, stop giving people bundles. Stop with the bundling system. It's not helping matters. You're giving people channels nobody wants. That system doesn't work. <sighs> Let me read the article here a little bit. While the death of the cable TV industry has long been talked about, there is finally some proof that it's actually happening. The U.S. multi-channel segment posted its first full-year loss of subscribers in 2013, according to research firms SNL Current. The segment, which consisted of cable companies, satellite providers, and telephone companies, the sale of TV lost 251,000 subscribers in 2013. That is a huge loss. That is a huge loss. Dipping approximately 1 million combined subscribers. That dip could be taken as one time anomaly, but SNL uh, researchers do not believe that to be the case. While seasonally dividing quarterly, the clients have become routine for industry watching an annual dip, um, illustrated longer term downward pr um, pressure, even as economic conditions gradually improved report stated the cable company are being hit the hardest the S the, the um, estimate cable operator lost nearly two million video subscribers for the full year and three hundred and eighty eight thousand in the fourth quarter to finish in 2013 with fewer than 54.4 million basic subscribers the satellite company did better um, likely contributing to the decline of the cable as Dish, Nasdaq Dish, and uh, DirecTV, Nasdaq DUTT controlled. Crumbs and procedures net describers gained for the year. Forestalling an annual decline for perhaps another year. Satellite gained 101,000 subscribers in the fourth quarter posted a total gain of 170,000 subscribers. Service offers, by, service offered by telephone companies also pushed gain lead by AT&T. U-verse, the combined multi-channel video describer service by Verizon. Files, AT&T U-verse uh, reaches 10.7 million in the end of the fourth quarter behind its net ad. So what does this all mean? It basically means that many people have just gotten tired of the same old, same old from cable companies. It doesn't help matters when they have a st when they um, locked out people from getting their channels and blaming each other as well. But you're, you're seeing the writing on the wall. Um, let's be realistic here. Um, a lot of people have just gotten tired of the bundles. A lot of people have just gotten tired of being put into a contract and have channels that they are not going to watch or watch once in the blue moon. All right. Um, this is no exception to that. I mentioned this before. Um, I may had a hundred and some odd channels. I probably only use 30% of those channels. And the reason is most of the channels repeats 
of the other channels already have. The only difference was is one was in the East Coast and one was in the West Coast, and they had a different time zone. So in many ways, I can, if I miss a movie, I can catch it again during the West Coast channel. But either way, why have pay for six channels, three of them being the same damn thing? It didn't make no sense. But that's the way um, a lot of these providers was doing, and it was pretty much a bad scam in many ways. I mean, the only difference between Dish really was the fact is you, they gave you a special package where you can actually get every last baseball game, every last uh, football game on that market, even some from sports I never even heard of. I didn't even know cricket was still being played in the country and rugby. Of course, I joke, but that's what you was getting uh, with this network that still made it worth um, the money in many ways, but they did charge a lot of money. Same thing goes with a lot of cable companies. Netflix, com Netflix really changed the game. Netflix have changed it to the point where you don't need to pin a bundle. Just buy what you want and you're good. And that's how it's supposed to be. I mean, there's no question that Netflix have hurt them. Hurt them big time. And here's another thing that's also been hurting the cable companies. Channels like WWE has been doing, what other um, networks have been doing, they are streaming now. You don't have to have a cable provider. You can go to the source itself and pay a, a, pay a low a monthly description, and you're good to go. And that's what a lot of people have been doing. A lot of people are saying, okay, if I want my wrestling, would I pay this much money to get my wrestling plus the pay-per-views, or will I pay $56 for the cable company to watch it on their format? A lot of people are wrestling fans are moving towards the WWE Network. Um, there are still who not, but there are a lot more going over there because to them, they're diehard fans, and they were willing, and to them, their investment to save money is greater than staying with a cable company and getting charged month after month after month that can total up to thousands of dollars. <clears throat> so that's the whole thing. And it says here, since in addition to satellite, Netflix and Hulu cable companies are often face new op options for customers that like the WWE. Let's really just talk about network or digitally streaming service that does not require cable description. There we go. We just uh, talked about that. While the WWE has a uh, niche audience, some upcoming servers seem likely to disrupt the current cable model and make it easier for people to cut the cord and still get their channels they watch most often. There you go. We just uh, talked about this seconds ago. This is the problem that cable is not realizing here. Cable still tries to do this model. People are now more wise and more cautious of what they're spending. And if they can get what they their favorite channels or their favorite shows on a different program without being caught into a bundle, they're going to do it and they're going to cut cable. And cable, to me, that's the big problem with the cable companies right now. They don't want to change their model. They're going to have to if they're going to compete with the Netflix of the world, the WWE of the world, and other places that are going to come in and make it more compatible and make it more price-worthy for them to say, why should I do cable or dish where well, I can just go here and just get my favorite shows and that's it. You don't need to watch your favorite shows on cable no more. Some of the shows now, if you, especially if you're a Disney fan or, or a fan of Psych or the fans of, uh, of Monk, you can go watch it on Netflix. I watched almost a half a season of Psych. Loved the show. And my sister's house when she had it on Netflix. I don't regret my one episode. Same thing with some of the original content they have. So it's really, it, to me, cable just needs to change their model. You need to stop with the bundles. Need to stop with the uh, with the overpricing. That's another thing, and realize that hey, you got competition now, and it doesn't require them to have um, wires being plugged onto their um, their service. But until they start doing that, they they they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna have to they're gonna deal with this situation now what they have, which is change which is losing subscribers. <clears throat> Sorry about the repeat, guys. I'll leave a link below. You guys can read it for yourself. It's a very interesting story. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the stories. Now, before I uh, go on, I still have some time to spare here. Um, this was brought up by the Archfiend. If you guys don't know, Archfiend is a, is a vlogger who does a lot of uh, vlogging on many different topics. Um, topics that you may agree or disagree. Um, I often watch this stuff. It's always good to hear something from a different perspective. Um, there are some stuff I actually agree with him with. There are some stuff I don't, I don't agree with him, but I respect his opinion, and at least he has the foresight to bring it out there. 
Um, he recently brought up an, um, an issue that I wasn't aware of until he brought it up. I'm actually going to be looking into it more. And once I get the full story, I will talk about it more and more. I won't do it as an entertainment roundup story. It will just be a, a, a vlog story that I probably will do on both channels because it is important, especially with the YouTube community being where it is right now. Um, but he basically said that there were going to be some new guidelines in terms of the flagging system, which is um, people are going to be watching, monitoring the videos that's going to come out, and if they suspect, and I'm going to put a keyword, suspect um, violations of the YouTube um, um, copyright contact, uh, it will be flagged, but it will not be taken down. It will be sent to YouTube themselves. And uh, simply put, if YouTube feels uh, that um, that is not a violation of their policies, they won't um, do anything with it. But if it is, they will flag it and possibly take it down from there. Now, <clears throat> of course, uh, from what Archfiend said, that uh, a lot of people are, of course, making a big deal as for anything that has to do with um, censorship, of course. Um, but he did bring up the situation of why this may be a good thing and not a bad thing. I have to agree with what he says for one reason. Let's be honest here. The flagging program is broken, all right? And the fact is, it should never have been at the hands of individuals. There should be not been a, pro, uh, a system where we ourselves should be uh, policing ourselves in the matter because we've already seen what happens when you allow uh, certain people who to get keys to um, to the building. They run amok, and sometimes they do. Um, they abuse that kind of power to the point where we had a situation a few months ago with the contact IDs. Um, Total Biscuit was a perfect example. His video was taken down by a corporation because he had an opinion. Um, it wasn't nothing he violated, and he actually proved that he didn't do anything um, wrong. It was them who basically was um, was abusing that power, and he was using it so that way. It won't. Uh, they won't get bad reviews. This is the kind of censorship that is wrong. This is the kind of censorship that should not stand. But unfortunately, because we have a very weak policy, this actually happened. And we have seen it a lot more with people who don't like someone's opinion. You have that flag, and you can just flag someone down. The next thing you know, that video is gone. That is not um, a, a proper good business practices. And it's not even good for you. For even if we're not paying for the services, it's still not good for YouTube because it shows that YouTube is really, and which must be honest, they haven't been um, doing a job in making sure this kind of stuff has happened. Does not happen. Um, and this has been my major problem with Google. Google has wants to be this big entity. They are this big entity, but they don't want to improve on the products they have. And YouTube has been the most neglected. Uh, product they, that they have done. They made improvements in terms of upgrades and constantly upgrading the face and images, but they haven't improved the service where if there's a problem, I can't contact them. Um, yeah, they got troubleshooters, but troubleshooters are going to give you so far. You still want to hear a voice. You still want to hear someone. So that way you can explain um, to them what's going on, and hopefully they can fix it. But unfortunately, they don't even have that. And that's the, and that's been a major issue. It seems like they want to be this big entity, but when it comes to customer service, they don't want to have that. They don't want. They they seem they don't have the time for that. And to me, before you advance for anything big, you need to improve on one thing that can be critical to a business like Google. And that's customer service. Period. Um, and with the, with the situation with the with the ID um, system that they had, which pretty much was a huge backlash left and right. I mean, not only small channels was getting hit, I got hit with a couple of them, which make no sense at all, because I don't monetize my videos. Uh, but I got hit with it. And big channels like Angry Joe and Watch Mojo. Watch Mojo got hit hard. Um, they lost a lot of money off of that. Uh, with that. And that's the problem is, and there was a lot of false claims on that. So, if this is the step they're going to take into and finally alleviate that, then, you know what? Fine. I'll take a live person over a computer any day. Um, my biggest beef is, they should have done this years ago. They should have had a group of people, admins, uh, 
monitoring what's going on on the site, making sure everything is going good. I know there's billions and billions of videos, but you need to have something um, to to curve this down because it has become a problem. It's become a very, very big problem. I'm going to read further on to this because I think it's very important that uh, that we keep an eye on what changes happens on the, um, on YouTube um, because a lot of stuff is changing, especially with the monetization. So they're gonna have to they're gonna have to deal with this, especially if they want to become what a lot of people feel is more of an entertainment entity um, to compete with other uh, with other um, video sharing sites and become this big entity that they have. But they're gonna have to make improvements. They're gonna have to actually pretty much step up their game in terms of quality customer service. And they have to give a reason for a video maker who really makes videos high quality videos to actually post here. Um, and that's something that I think that they are, they need to address. They something they need to address, and they need to address soon. And uh, hopefully, with this, this is the step in the right direction. But like I said, I'll give my full, full opinion on that when I read the articles and see the overall where the overall direction they're going to. But from what I have gotten. From what um, Orange Phoenix said, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. I think it's something that is definitely needed, especially if they're going to hire professional people to monitor this. Keep in mind, human error is always going to be there. You're always going to be wondering about the motivation of some of these guys. But I'd rather take this than have some machine who only is programmed to catch things, even though that what they're catching is not uh, violating any kind of copyright laws or even doesn't even exist in a video period so let's just knock on wood and hope this is the step to the right direction that YouTube is doing with that being said guys love to hear your comments love to hear what you got to say until next time J77 saying take care be safe and I'll talk to you soon goodbye